Laws of Attraction, Chapter 13, Prior Restraint. Back up. Allie was at the hotel with Peter Koenig, as in the CEO of the company we mounted a class action suit against. Uh, was he funding a movie or something? If he was, that wasn't the only thing he was doing. Gigi's eyes widen as she points to the section of the police report in question. Oh my god, the report wasn't taken at the restaurant, it was taken in the hotel room. They were sharing, which means they were sleeping together. Allie had more secrets than we knew. This is why I didn't know her pass, there's tons of material there. Dude, sleeping with people is not a past. It is in the courtroom. Either way, the police report proves Allie had some sort of relationship with Koenig. I mean, look at the picture of him in the Business Times, and look at the footage from the mansion. Okay. He looks like he has the same build as the man from the footage, at least. Uh, you know what? I bet he's the guy she volunteered at Save Our Seas with, too. The coordinator just showed us footage from uh, one of their channels. Uh, Koenig could definitely be the guy we spotted in it. Wouldn't someone have recognized the head of one of the largest multinational companies in the world? Seriously, have you seen, like, Bill Gates? Guy looks nothing like he used to look. <laughs> in LA, if he was dressed casually, probably not. Especially if he was standing next to Ali Velasquez. You and the other associates take a moment to consider the weight of the news. Obviously, this isn't hard proof that Koenig's the guy in the footage, but it's definitely an important piece of the puzzle. We should find out more before telling game. If this is a goose chase, we should uh, find that out on our own. Peter Koenig is one of the most powerful men on the planet, and we don't want to start down the path of accusing him if uh, there's any chance we got it wrong. Play it that way if you want. In the meantime, I'm happy to be the one who impresses Gabe with a new lead. Uh, dude, the whole get the most points thing? Not the focus right now. Maybe not for you, which is why you're behind me in the rankings, McGraw. I do think letting Gabe know as soon as possible is the best move, but he's been MIA all day. I texted him this morning. I uh, haven't been, uh, haven't even been read yet. Maybe we should try calling? You dial Gabe's number, but it just rings, and rings, and rings, until finally you hear a clipped recording asking you to leave a message. We call that just a voicemail. He didn't pick up. I should email him the new information. Maybe he's more attentive to his work inbox. I'm not sure it's wise to put this in writing, at least not until we know more. Agreed. Anything with this much, uh... Bombshell potential can explode in your face if you're not careful. Bow taps a shoe on the tile, and the four of you look over at him. He has a glint in his eye. If we can't reach Gabe anyway, may as well spend the time learning more. And there's one person who could help us do that. Marcus. I think based on Bow's into something. And even if Marcus doesn't have the answers, he deserves to know about this. Hmm... Talking to Marcus does seem like the right play here. Congratulations, Bao. I think you made, uh, finally made a decent idea. Now taking the bait, dude. So, do we, uh, do this smart? I'm thinking we send Quinn in. He has the best connection with him. My I mean, I see it. This is a delicate topic, no matter uh, what their relationship looked like recently. Best to send someone he trusts. I agree. This is a delicate matter. Even he and Allie were broken home. We don't want him clamming up on us. Oh, great. I bet you'll make sure Gabe knows that you were the one who did all the difficult client handling. Recognizing when to step back is an important skill, too, Martin. When should go? He's not gonna pretend like we didn't help. Uh, besides, if he tried to, I'd totally call him out on it. Well, I suppose I can trust that, if nothing else. Fine, I vote to send Queen in. 
All right, well, in that case, I guess we should uh, try to track him down. By the time you arrive at Marcus's new apartment, at the top floor of a swanky but unassuming building in West Hollywood, the sun has gone down. He flashes you a smile as you walk through the door. Gwen, it's good to see you. Uh, I like the uh, new digs. Are you uh, setting up here long term? No, it's just temporary. Things at the house have been complete zoo between the press and the security and the cops even. And once this is all over, I don't think I uh, want to go back there. It uh, hadn't been our house for a year anyway. Hmm, sounds like a plan to me. He ushers you over to a couch and brings over some drinks. I'm actually glad you wanted to meet me up, uh, meet up today. It's uh, been a little weird having you guys all the way across the country. Don't get me wrong, everybody's doing a great job keeping me in the loop, but sometimes you want that FaceTime, you know? Marcus. <clears throat> It must be tough. Being in the middle of all this would be hard on anyone. I'm sorry you feel alone. The crazy thing is, logically, I know that I'm not. I have friends, family, and y'all on my team, but in my head so much. I, I just don't want to be the burden weighing everyone else down, forcing them to dissect every little detail with me. Well, if you uh, ever need me to just talk about the case at length, we're definitely here for that. Thanks, Quinn. I'll keep it in mind. Anyway, I'm guessing you have news? We do. We found some new information, but we're hoping that you can put it into context for us. I'll do my best. What the hell is the sparkly crap in the top right of the screen? It's like broken glass and it goes all over the blue. Anyway, Allie filed a police report shortly before her death. The odd thing is, it was while she was staying at Hotel Pavilion. Staying there. That's kind of odd. It's pretty close to the house. Uh, we think she was using it to meet up with someone privately. Do you recognize the name Peter Koenig? Peter Koenig, as in Koenig Co Chemical? Mm, yeah. We think he might be the man Allie was seeing recently, but... That's ridiculous. Allie hated guys like him. I mean, she was a huge environmentalist, and uh, she always talked about how this his chemicals were doing more damage to the planet than anyone seemed to realize. The idea she was with him... Mm, I'm sorry. I should have guessed it would be hard to hear from uh, about Allie's love life. It's not that. We've been broken up for over a year. It doesn't bug me to think about her dating. Anyone uh, she wants to, honestly. But that guy, I just... I can't believe it. Hmm, might seem like it's coming out of left field, but we have to pretty compelling evidence that, that this was going on. We're just hoping that uh, since you knew Allie better than anyone, you could help us understand the situation better. He shakes his head, saw her over taking his handsome features. If Allie was really sleeping with this Koenig guy, I clearly didn't know her at all. You're absolutely certain they were involved? Like, this wasn't, a, I don't know, some PR plan they were cooking up, or... It could have been, but we don't think so, no. Huh. People change, I guess. I'll ask around, see if anyone else uh, we know met him. Or if she was, I don't know, giving things of his at the house. Mm, that could help. But I hope I don't have to remind you that you cannot tell anyone about their relationship. At that, Marcus laughs, the sound grim in the brightly, brightly lit hotel room. Don't worry, Quinn. I'm getting pretty used to being alone with my thoughts. Marcus rolls his neck and saunters over to the bar, uncorking a bottle of whiskey. I mean, I'm not surprised she'd found someone. We agreed to date other people a while ago. The only reason I hadn't was my filming schedule. Yeah, sounds to me like you were uh, focusing on yourself. You could say that. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't a monk or anything. I just... Didn't find anything steady. Honestly, what I want more than anything right now? He seems to catch himself. He shakes his head and then takes a long sip of his drink. Then he swallows. He still doesn't finish his thought. What? What is it you want? Allie and I have been talking very seriously about when to go public with the break in the last few months. But it didn't happen, obviously. And now with all this, saying we broken up a year ago, would only make things worse. 
ah, I just feel stuck. You know, that grief, the, the case. Sometimes it's hard to see the way out. Mm, Marcus, I'm so sorry. I can't imagine how hard this is for you. I know. I have to be careful. And maybe it's weird to even be thinking about this, but... He eases down onto the couch next to you, looking more vulnerable than you've ever seen him. He takes a deep breath, as if stealing himself. What I want more than anything is just to feel like a human being again. People who don't even know me are dragging my name through the mud. The paparazzi are tracking me like a wild animal and looking out the same four walls day in and day out is driving me insane. His eyes meet yours, the intensity of his gaze makes you catch your breath. I just want to feel something, a genuine connection with another person, with you, if you want. Oh. Does this... Does this mean what I think it means? Listen, I'm not good with this shit! Send help! No, 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 Intuition. Um, I know it's been frustrating, but I promise this will all be over soon. At which point you can move on publicly as you like. Yeah, this would be very extremely unprofessional. I am but uh, your lawyer. We are not Mount Chickawawa. He pauses for a fraction of a second, and then... Right, of course. I'm, I'm really lucky to have you in my corner, Quinn. Thank you for coming over tonight and telling me the truth. I'll see what I can uh, find out about Ali and Koenig for you. you. Say goodbyes and make your exit. Throwing one last look over your shoulder, Marcus, he's still sitting on the couch, clearly lost in thought. Listen, I can go get you someone if you need. <laughs> a couple days later, you're back in New York. After meeting with Marcus, Gabe was still incommunicado. Except for the single text sending the team back at the, on the morning flight and a note that he had to stick around to follow up on something. He calls all the associates into his office the morning after he gets back, but he doesn't offer any explanation for the meeting. I wonder if anyone else knows what Gabe's planning to spring on us. I should ask none of these people. They don't fucking know. Let's go with Aislinn, though. Feeling closer, lowering your voice to a whisper. Do you know what Gabe wants? I haven't heard anything since he sent us home. I wish I did, but it must be big. I've never known him to ignore a single text or call in five years I've been here. Before you can try to suss out more information, he strolls in through the door, looking like a cat that ate the canary. Good, you're all here. I got big news. Actually, scratch that. That This register is as earth-shattering. Ah, uh, what's going on? Did you find something in L.A.? Not just something, someone. But before we get into that, let's put Martin out of his misery. <laughs> Alright, Martin, look at the flowers. Bang. What? I I'm not... The rankings, Martin. The dummy the whole two days with no word on the front is something you're just handling. Oh, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind knowing where I stand. At the bottom, Martin, where you always stand. With an amused sniff, Gabe moves over to a whiteboard and shifts you all into position. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. So pretty. Need to get a little, like, cloth clean off first place. So beautiful. Oh, Gigi's on the bottom, huh? Well, okay. Would have thought Martin would have been on it. Not surprisingly, I'm killing it. This partnership is mine. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, where was I? Uh, you were telling us, actually, uh, what? Who? Well, who? You turned up in L.A.? Oh, right. When Jacob sent me that still from the night of the murder, I realized this couldn't be the first time this man was caught by the security cameras, which would be a dead end when we thought the footage was wiped daily. But Quinn and Aisling's digging showed us uh, there was another way to find it. If there was, uh, if you were committed enough, at least. Wait, are you saying you found more footage? Thanks to Jacob combing through hours and hours of cloud footage, which is shockingly hard to access, yes. Take a look for yourselves. Gabe grabs a remote from his desk and plays a clip of the security footage on the computer screen. Oh, well, it's Koenig. There's our guy. Some baseball cap, same build, same man. This just happened to be taken on a different night several weeks later. Or earlier, excuse me. I took this image back to uh, all the charities Allie frequented and got positive IDs. This man was Allie's frequent guest. You'll recognize his name. It's Peter Koenig, right? 
Gabe's brow furrows as he takes in your subdued reactions. He turns the screen away, the better to take you all in. Why don't look, uh, why don't any of you look the beast least bit surprised? Actually, we found this out yesterday and tried to contact you. There was a police report with Koenig's name in it. We just needed to verify. Hmm. You're even more of a crack team than I thought. I'm glad you all found more evidence. It can only help us and Marcus. That's true. Which raises another question, or thing we should probably tell you. Uh, when we couldn't get a hold of you... The door bursts open! <laughs> and Sadie stalks in. Val's words dry up as he registers the look on her face. Which one of you is responsible for this? Oh no, don't tell me Marcus did it. I'm guessing you're not here about the good news. Good news? No, I wouldn't call it that. Uh, what happened? Marcus Sharp called the office this morning and informed us he's planning to look into Allie's boyfriend, Peter Koenig. Oh, shit. Gabe doesn't immediately react, but you notice his hand tightening at a sign. How in God's name did the client learn this name before I did? In fact, how did he know it at all? Own up. But Sadie, I have to come clean. I'm the one who told Marcus Sally uh, was seeing Peter Koenig. Sadie turns her fury on you, disdaining, seeping into her every word. To think my top senior associate, front runner in the rankings, would pull something like this. You were at the top. Though after a mistake like this, you're in last place now. I thought Gabe holds up a hand, cutting you off. Sad I am responsible for them, so the blame lies with me. I was unavailable yesterday, and the team made a decision, albeit a poor one. Sadie's discerning gaze turns towards Gabe. He straightens his shoulders just a bit. Noble of you, Gabe. But these are senior associates. They should know better. You shouldn't have had to tell them to not blab sensitive information to our client before we could strategize. The resulting silence is like a weight pressing down on the room. Sadie stares at each of your colleagues before her eyes come to rest on you again. This is a colossal mistake. Tell me one good reason why I shouldn't fire you on the spot, Quinn. Bao clears his throat beside you. Your mouth falls open as he steps forward. I was my idea. I'm sorry, Aunt Sadie. She blinks and turns to her nephew. What are you saying? Is he taking the blame for the entire team and for me? We needed more information, and I thought the likeliest source would be Marcus, so I strong-armed Quinn and, uh, telling him, uh, what we learned. The Quinn tried to tell me that we should talk to you and Gabe before moving forward, but I really wanted the team to impress you. I can't believe, for God's sake, you should have known better! I know, and I'm sorry, Aunt Sadie. It uh, won't happen again. Damn right it won't. We will discuss this further. As for the rest of you, you should have overruled him, since you all showed a lack of... a shocking lack of judgment. From now on, everything concerning this case goes through me or Gabe first. Okay, so what part of we tried to contact Gabe did you not understand? The we tried to contact Gabe or we tried to contact Gabe? You do not interview a witness, write a brief, follow a chain of evidence. You don't even blink until we've approved it. Is that clear? Murmurs of assent flutter through the room. With a sharp nod, Sadie turns on her heel and strides out. The resulting silence in the room is deafening. Well, at least no one's fired, huh? Wow. Um. Thanks for the save. <clears throat> I didn't tell her anything that was, uh, wasn't true. Hardly a save. You took responsibility for what was essentially a group decision, and you made me sound blameless when we both know I wasn't. Uh, you'd have done the same for me, Quinn. We're a team, remember? If you're done celebrating your escape... His voice is icy cold, jaw set as he stares each of you down in turn. I trusted you on this case. Clearly that was a mistake. <clears throat> I know Aunt Sandy sounded pissed just now, but we all were trying to do was 
It's not Sadie's re reaction I'm worried about, Bao. I shouldn't have ex shouldn't have to explain that to you. This information could have been a huge advantage to our case, but now instead of following it up and strategizing how best to deploy it, we have to run interference on our client. Gabe, he deserved to know. He deserves not to go to jail, and I've warned you before, Quinn. Getting emotionally involved is a mistake. This time, a huge one. Gabe, let us fix this. We can. He shakes his head, and disappointment written in every line of his face. You can all go home immediately. You've done enough for today. That evening, you sit in your apartment, flipping through the case file, but not really absorbing any of the information in it. You're about to give in when head to bed when a call from the office comes through. Queen, it's Sadie and Gabe. You're on speaker. Oh, okay. What's up? Marcus Sharp has decided to call a press conference for tomorrow morning here in New York City. Um, why here? Why at all? Because you all opted to give him information he shouldn't have had. <clears throat> um, do you know what he's planning to say? No idea, but we're hoping you can find out, or barring that, at least steer the ship back on course. What? How would I do that? Sleep with him. I don't care. <laughs> I just had to. The associates were right about one part of their decision. It's clear Marcus trusts you. We're hoping that means he'll be also willing to listen to you. He specifically requested that you join him at the press conference tomorrow. I'll be there too, but he wants you at running point. Which means our best chance is to go in with a unified, thought-out strategy. I'd say it's our only chance. We need you to understand the strategy, so you can convey it to Marcus and steer him away from trouble. I strongly recommend you join us at the office. Both the senior partners telling me to come in and fix this? Sure, must be important. What? No, really? Join Sadie and Gabe for a strategy session that will help Marcus and yeah, 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 diamond choice. Let's go. Well, this sounds important. I should get there. <laughs> you head to the firm and find Sadie and Gabe in their office reviewing the security cam footage. Gabe glances up as you come in. Wait, I'm glad you could make it. I know it's late. Exactly. Let's make this quick. I want you both fresh tomorrow. You take a free seat next to Gabe and lean in to look over the materials they've gathered. First thing is first. We want to make sure Marcus doesn't sound like he's passing the blame. Right. We want to feel like a legitimate development, not a just a look over there distraction. A smile flickers over his face. I knew you'd be quick on the uptake. We thankfully got Marcus to agree not to share Koenig's name, so that's one disaster averted. Okay, now releasing his name. Smart play. He's powerful. I'm sure if uh, he found out we're onto him, it would complicate the investigation tenfold. Exactly. <clears throat> the last thing we want is a circus. That always tarnishes the integrity of a case. If a man like Koenig knows we're sniffing him out, he'll stop at nothing to preserve his reputation and assets. Yeah, it's gonna come out sooner or later. But in the meantime, we'll put Koenig exactly where we want him. He'll be scared, but unsure what we have. You think he might make a mistake? We certainly hope so. Regardless, this is a decision. Let's move on. Um, alright, if we're not naming any names, what's the goal of the press conference? The goal of the press conference is to make your side look good, but a, an affair is a double-edged sword. Good point. I'm not sure people will see it as just another motive. I think we should be able to avoid that problem. <clears throat> we just need to make sure we focus on the fact that he's just only uh, learning this information. That he's just as shocked as we are. Well, I mean, technically he did learn the information just now, and he is kind of shocked. And we need him to play up the emotional aspect. Marcus isn't a, a, mo a motor by trade. We won't be able to feel this with him. I suppose the only question left is, what emotion should he be focused on conveying? Hmm. I think Marcus should play up a sense of betrayal. 
He was the devoted, loyal boyfriend, but they were having problems. We focus on how blindsided him, on how it blindsided him, on how much he's hurting. How can we do that without vilifying Allie? I'm perfectly willing to vilify a dead woman if it means an innocent man goes free. I agree. Unfortunately. I actually think we can have our cake here. Uh, the goal isn't emphasizing all the ways she's betrayed him, just his own sense of hurt. It will uh, sympathize with his pain. <clears throat> and of course the pain's genuine after a loss like this. Okay, I'm seeing it. Let's get moving. She nods her approval, and Gabe smiles. Looks like the strategy session is going well so far. We have a good overall approach, but we have to assume the press are going to try to pick anything we say apart. Damned vultures. I think we can handle anything that uh, comes our way. Of course we can, but we need to all be on the same page. If someone goes off book, it could devolve quickly. Alright, in that case, we all agree to, um... Don't all the reporters. Any questions they have, we ignore. We just keep telling our story. Mm, it could make us look suspicious like we're hiding something. True, but if we limit our exposure, we'll look much more suspicious if we reveal something we didn't mean to. I'm on board. I think that's all left to decide is who's making the opening statement, Quinn or Gabe. Gabe clearly has the most experience with the media out of the two of you. But Quinn has a better relationship with Margus. The more natural and at ease we look up uh, there, the better. Gabe turns to you. I have full confidence you can blow this out of the water, but I'll take point if that's what's, uh, if that's best. I think... <clears throat> I'm the best fit. I'm the one who uh, got us into this situation, so I'll get us out of it. Besides, they uh, won't be as familiar with me, which might be easier to deflect their questions. Gabe can be back up. Excellent. I hope you won't disappoint me. I'm confident he'll blow you away. If this strategy session is any indicator, I agree. Now, so do we have a plan? An excellent plan, as far as I'm concerned. I will say I'm more impressed than I expected to be, Quinn. Sadie leans back in her chair, a rare smile playing on her lips. This could actually work in our favor, and we'd better hope it does. Well, especially it's a two-for-one case. The next morning, you're preparing for Marcus's press conference when he calls you. His anxiety palpable even over the phone. You quickly make your way over to his hotel room in Midtown. I'm so glad you're here. I've been freaking myself out all morning. I'm your lawyer. Of course I'm here. Honestly, I wasn't sure uh, that would apply anymore. It seems like the team isn't very happy with me right now. <clears throat> you're right about that. But I understand why you called the conference. You need to feel like you're doing something instead of just waiting around for a verdict. I get it. I'm just glad somebody gets where I'm coming from. But I'm starting to think I maybe acted a little too quickly. Well, we're in this thing now. The only way out is through. We need to, you to, uh, you need to trust we can get you through those. Okay, I'm trusting you. In that case, what's the best move going into this? What can I do? The more important thing is to, for you to stay calm. I gotta lie, that's the toughest assignment you could have given me right now. <clears throat> when you're feeling anxious, focus on getting justice for Allie. She was your best friend, and yes, sure, she was keeping some secrets from you, but this guy still deserves to go down for what he did. If you feel yourself getting anxious, just remember, getting through this isn't just about you, it's about her too. As far as the big picture, and the big picture strategy, we don't want to give the reporters anything they can spin. Anything they ask, ignore. Uh, we're there to make a statement, that's it. Wouldn't it be more, feel more honest if I just say what I really think? We're uh, just looking out for you. The truth may be on your side, but that doesn't mean the press is. I hear you. And trust me, I'm used to having to navigate the press, but doesn't that seem a little, um, inauthentic? So, was acting, right? He laughs, and you check your watch. Oh no, we only have 15 minutes before it starts. I need to change. You, uh, want anything specific? I have the concierge and, uh, send something up. Uh, like what? A power look if you want we'd both probably feel more confident and the press would have to take us seriously and eh, let me see it and before diamond 
Oh yes, I'm feeling very powerful. Rawr. Perfect. Let's go stick the landing. You get Marcus to squeeze on the shoulder, finish getting ready, and then head out to meet Gabe at the press conference. When you and Marcus arrive at the conference venue, Gabe's already waiting, looking pre preternaturally calm, as always. You ready to change their minds about you, Marcus? Too late to back out now, even if I'm uh, not, right? You're ready. We all are. As Marcus approaches the water cooler to get himself a drink, Gabe turns to you. He gives your uh, he eyes in your new outfit approvingly. Literally, you're dressed to take the press by storm. I figured if there was a time to give up my game, it was uh, now. Or up, but great instinct before we head out, though. Any nerves we need to get out of the way before we're on? Me? Nervous? You know me better than that. I'm more excited than nervous. We have an opportunity to reframe the narrative here. We absolutely do. We just have to hope the frame we wind up with is more flattering to our client. Marcus returns, wiping a bead of sweat from his brow. Let's get this over with. I'm starting to lose my nerve. No problem. We were just uh, about to start anyway. Just stick to the strategy. Don't worry. Quinn filled me on on the plan you guys came up with. It makes no sense to me. Glad to hear you're at least occasionally willing to listen to reason. I just know Quinn's on my side no matter what. If this is the plan he thinks will work, I'm on board. Well, then let's get out there and change the narrative. As you step onto the stage, you notice the crowd of reporters sizing you up. A hush falls over the room as they take in your presence. Clearly they're pulling out the big guns. Anyone dressed like that's pretty high up in the food chain. A grand burn. Yeah, just ignore Gabe. Jesus. Especially presenting a confident front. Looks like my outfit's already doing the talking before we even step up to the microphone. Quick, we should run off stage then. Duh. You take the podium and clear your throat, feeling out the energy of the room. You know, Sadie sitting off to the side, watching carefully. Good morning. We call this press conference to inform you of all uh, significant new developments in the uh, Alina Ves Velasquez case. <clears throat> Tongue twist. Say that three times fast. Off to your right, Gabe gives you an encouraging nod. Our client, Marcus Sharp, would like to make a statement. Please hold your questions until he's finished. Short and sweet. Perfect. You step aside and offer the podium to Marcus, who steps up with shaking hands. I know this is uh, this case is very high profile, and the people are deeply invested in finding out what happened to her. It's what I want too. Marcus looks back at you, and you give him a covert thumbs up. Many of you know Allie from the movies and TV screens, but I knew the privates person, which makes me uh, what I'm about to say even harder to process. The fact is, I've recently learned that. Allie was involved with another man in the months leading up to her death. The crowd explodes, reporters leaning forward, microphones at the ready in response to the bombshell. You're saying Allie was cheating on you? Do you think the mystery man killed her? He sends Marcus's distress at the immediate commotion. His mouth falls open, his eyes dart between your team and the reporters. I, um... Gabe steps forward, partially shielding Marcus from the press with his frame. Marcus can't and won't answer questions of that nature. Please allow Mr. Sharp to finish his statement. The reporters quiet down with visible relief. Marcus nods to you and takes the podium once again. He squares his shoulders as he surveys the audience, just waiting for him to make a single mistake. It's been difficult to process this, and honestly, it feels like a betrayal of everything I knew, or thought I knew, about us. But that doesn't change the fact that she deserves justice. Marcus gives one last nod to the press and steps back. How long was Allie seeing this man? How much do you know about the man in question? Do you have a name? You catch Sadie's eye and she imperceptibly shakes her head. <clears throat> in order to preserve the integrity in the investigation, we can't speak about those sorts of details at this time. In closing, let us note our only goal is to find the truth. 
Allie had a complicated life, recognizing her for the woman she was instead of who we believe her to be can only help us in achieving justice for her, her family, for Mr. Sharp. We want to see the truth come to light, just like every one of you. We hope you'll join us in this endeavor. Honestly, this is an even better story than I expected. I'm all in. That completes our statement. We thank you for your time. What about the Q&A? You just dropped a giant bomb on everyone. If Ali had a secret lover, what does it mean for her relationship with Marcus and her legacy as Hollywood sweetheart? Gabe swoops in and addresses the rowdy audience, his soothing voice helping to calm down the noise. We can't make any comments that would risk this investigation. Please respect that. Reporters continue to shout questions, but Gabe raises a hand. As much as I'd love to stay in chat all day, that's all we have uh, to say for now. Thank you for your time. You and Gabe slip back behind the curtain, and a wave of relief washes over you. Well, we managed to get through it. Hmm, see, I was about to say you knock it out of the park, and I actually think the press conference might have helped us overall. Really, but you and Sadie were so worried about it. We were both, uh, but our strategy paid off. Sometimes you can turn a potential threat to your advantage. I think we did just that today. Hmm, you're not just saying that to make me feel good? This was a success, and thanks in no small part to your hard work and the quick thinking. Well done, Quim. One of the reporters slips through the curtain after you. Rissy, I have to say, that was masterful. There's just one thing I want to know. Gabe moves away to confer quietly with the reporter, leaving you to debrief with Marga. Out of sight of the media and the attorney as you have a moment to decompress. How are you feeling? A little shaken up, but at least it's over. Speaking of nerves, there's something I wanted to give you. I meant to bring it up before the conference, but I was anxious, and uh, I blanked. Marcus pulls out a phone out of his pocket and hands it to you. The police finally finished cloning it. They returned it to just as I left L.A. I was going through it last night trying to figure out if there was any reference to Koenig, but I couldn't find any. Hmm, damn it. I could have used a smoking gun. I hear you. There was one thing that I thought you uh, might want to look at, though. It's her text with her brother. Marcus taps a few buttons on the screen, pulling up a text chain. I don't think this is safe. When are we got? When are things going in? Soon. Don't worry, he has no idea what I'm planning. <clears throat> Looks like Allie's brother was pretty worried. You lower the phone in shock as Gabe rejoins you and Marcus. Take a look at these texts, Gabe. He scrolls a little further back and you read along. The texts make it pretty clear. If I have this right, Alejandro knew about the relationship and he seems to have known it was fake? Bingo. I guess the police thought he was talking about me, but Ali never told him we were faking anything. Ali and I agreed on not telling our families, which means he probably knew about whatever she was doing with Koenig. He sounds scared for her. Very. And Alex isn't a guy who scares easy. He let it all sink in and then gauge Gabe's reaction, but instead of seeing your worry reflected in his eyes, you notice that are bright with excitement. Marcus, this piece of evidence we've been waiting for, and if we use it right, it's going to change everything. What else might Allie's family know about their tryst with the CEO, Koenig Chemicals? Keep playing to find out. And speaking of which, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. It'd be greatly appreciated. And guess what? We have 3,500 videos on this channel. So feel free to not just continue enjoying just this series and this book, but also the other variety of content on this channel. Please do so. And uh, by doing so, also hit that subscribe button, especially if you did enjoy the content that I provided to you today. And uh, become a part of this community. Be great to have you as part of the crew. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.